Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to talk about extra index URL, which is often used for private PyPI servers. And I'm going to show you why you shouldn't do this and why <laughs> how, how an attacker can get in. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, in order to show you what's going on here, I have a bunch of setup, unfortunately. So I'm going to walk you through setting up a very basic local PyPI server. We're going to simulate public PyPI because I don't really want to dump random nefarious packages onto public PyPI, uh, and then we're gonna run a few PyPI servers. So let's let's get everything set up first, and then I'll show you the scenario in which an attacker can get into your systems. Uh, I've actually used this to receive close to $20,000 in bounties at this point uh, by finding, <laughs> finding companies that use extra index URL and exploiting them. Uh, but anyway, let's show you how this goes. So I'm going to set up a virtualenv. We are going to install PyPI server. Forget if it's the one with the dash or not. I think it's the right one. Yeah, this is the right one. <laughs> There's also PyPI dash server, which is different. Uh, we are going to make a local, and we're going to make a public directory. This is going to simulate our local internal PyPI server, one that your company might run. Uh, and this public one is going to represent public PyPI. It's often extremely convenient to use extra index URL to inherit public packages while still having your own private packages, uh, but I'm trying to show you why this is still a bad idea. Okay, uh, I am going to download some public packages into public just so that we have something there. Uh, let's just do pre-commit test public, and I'm going to make a small internal library. So you can see we have a bunch of things in here, cool. Fine, whatever. I'm going to make a small internal library that we're going to put onto our private PyPI. Uh, my library, sure. Uh, from setup tools, import setup, de or do setup directly, name equals my library, version equals 1.0, py modules, my library. Very extremely simple setup.py, not really need anything else. Uh, we're gonna touch my library.py so that we have something to distribute. And then we're gonna build this. <laughs> I know I should use build, whatever. Uh, we did the wheel. And then we're gonna put these packages into our private PyPI. We're gonna copy dist slash this into, what did I call it, local? Local, okay, cool. So now we have our setup here. Uh, we have some packages in our private PyPI and we have some packages in public PyPI. I'm gonna start PyPI servers representing both of those. PyPI is, is it dash here? It's dash here, okay. Run, I think I can use ports. Let's use 9001. And let's say 9001 is our public PyPI. Uh, we're also going to do the same thing. Uh, run ports 9002 for our local. So 9001 is public PyPI, 9002 is local. Now, normally when you use pip install, uh, it defaults to public PyPI, so it defaults similar to this, index URL equals HTTPS PyPI.org slash simple. We are going to substitute out index URL for our uh, fake public PyPI here. So instead we're going to use HTTP colon slash slash localhost 9001 slash simple. And we're gonna also add extra index URL for our uh, local PyPI, localhost 9002 slash simple. And so now we can use this command to install from our private PyPI, but also inherit packages from our public PyPI. Uh, let's say that we installed my library as well as pre-commit. We can see that this should succeed and it'll pull packages from the various places. Now, of course it cached everything here, but <laughs> you can see that uh, it was able to download from localhost 2, uh, 9002 to get my library, but it also pulled these from, presumably from the other PyPI, but it was cached, so who knows. Um, and this all works great and fine, and you, know, you ship this to production, you get your promotion, whatever. The problem is uh, kind of two things. One, this, and this is dependent on the pip version because it didn't always do this, uh, this index ordering here can cause public packages to override your local packages, even if they're the exact same version. Uh, so if you had pinned my library equals 1.0, someone could publish a package to public PyPI, which is 1.0, and have it override. Now you can kind of work around that by reordering these, uh, setting index URL as your private PyPI, 
and extra index URL as public PyPI, that'll at least switch the precedence in the latest version of pip. But it doesn't completely protect you against random a, a nefarious attacker uploading something to PyPI. Let me show you the scenario in which an unpinned install can install uh, nefarious code. And this is essentially the exploit that I use to uh, get bounties here. So we're gonna assume that I am now an attacker. Uh, I don't have control over my library, but I have noticed somehow that you are installing this special package in your internal PyPI. Uh, this can often be through like blog posts or open source libraries. A lot of times you leak private implementation detail about this. Uh, the other thing that an attacker could find is they could just guess your library name. Uh, most most companies, most Python shops in existence have written their own, you know, my company dash lib or my company dash logging or my company dash, you know, HTTP. And so you can often just guess these library names. Uh, but let's say that we had somehow figured out that some company had made a my library package and we're going to make our own nefarious version of this. Uh, now our nefarious version here is just going to raise system exit found, uh, but you can imagine you can imagine some other, you know, <laughs> get a shell or dump the databases or use the AWS credentials. Like there's all sorts of things that uh, an attacker could do here. Uh, we need to specifically guard our payload here <laughs> such that we don't trigger it on ourselves. So I'm going to make a little, a little back door here. Uh, if os.environ.get no pwned, <laughs> we're just going to skip this here. This will allow us to package this, and I'm going to bump the version to a very, very large number. This way, pip will generally prefer my library over any other library if it's pinned. Uh, you could even go, you know, even bigger than this. Uh, but let's set it to a thousand. That's probably good enough. And what did I call my environment earlier? This thing. So we're going to build this package. And I'm specifically going to make a source distribution and not a wheel here. Oh. Oh, right, if not. <laughs> I'm specifically going to make a source distribution and not a wheel. This way, when this library gets installed, it's going to run setup.py. It's going to run whatever arbitrary code here. Uh, you, you could also do this with a wheel if they had you know, done dash dash only binary all. You could put nefarious code inside the actual library itself. but. I'm going to do this at install time because that's probably the first, first time you would notice this. Okay, so now we have this distribution, and I, as the nefarious attacker, I'm going to upload this distribution to public PyPI. 1000 to public, and now if we go back to here, I'm actually going to make a new virtual env. Uh, yes. And now if I were to run that same install command that we had before, where we're installing unpinned my library, uh, as well as pre-commit. You'll see here that this runs and it's going to install our nefarious package from public PyPI, basically bypassing the entire idea of having a private package in the first place and pip just you know, bypass this directly. Uh, just to show you that this happens even if you were to change the precedence of these. So if we were to set ours as the highest precedence and public PyPI as the lower precedence, it's still gonna pull in that very large version library there. I uh, actually want to test one thing about the, I mentioned that if they were the same version, it has precedence. I think that's true. I just don't, just want to double check that. Uh, let's just make our source distribution and we're going to copy that source distribution. What? Uh, CP dist my library to public. So I just wanted to double check that if we set equals equals one, uh, we'll still have the right precedence here. So this is a slight mitigation for exact pinning. Okay, so in that case, it did pick this one from our our local one rather than going to PyPI. So pinning is one way to sort of get around this. Of course, if you ever install unpinned, you're gonna <laughs> install nefarious packages. Uh, the other thing, you know, the, the real solution to this is to not use extra index URL at all. Uh, mirror all of the packages that you care about into your private PyPI and only install from that. Don't ever install from public PyPI and you won't have to worry about a, a random attacker uploading a package there. The other thing that you can use to mitigate this is to only install using hashes. So verify all of the uh, distributions you're installing. There's a, a flag in pip tools, for instance, that will give you uh, a pinned requirements file that has hashes on it. And 
you know, if someone were to upload a nefarious package, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to get past your hashes because it would never match your uh, you know shot divity six or five twelve or whatever whatever hash you choose there. Um, so those are kind of the ways around this. Uh, my my <laughs> my bottom line advice is don't use extra index URL. It's so convenient and it's so easy to get started with, uh, but it's also really easy to get owned. Uh, anyway, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.